All right, before I start this video, I'm gonna make a disclaimer. It's a predictions video, surprisingly enough. So obviously it is predictions. If you've got a different prediction to me, that's brilliant. If you've predicted your team to finish higher than what I've got them in my predictions, terrific. That means you've got a different opinion. The chances of anyone actually getting all 20 positions correct is very, very slim. So chances are a lot of these will be wrong and that's perfectly fine. It's a predictions video. The transfer window hasn't even ended yet. So for certain teams, I'll make a, a statement about them. Like if they sign, for instance, a center back, then maybe I think they'll finish higher. I might do a part two to this when the transfer window officially ends, but because the Premier League kicks off tomorrow when this video is uploaded, obviously I need to bring it out now. So yeah, my predictions, Probably will be wrong, but that's all they are, predictions. So uh, yeah, stay so civil in the comments. Let me know what your predictions are, of course. I'll be uh, happy to hear them. But again, just be civil about it. Everyone's got an opinion and it doesn't really matter. It's a predictions video at the end of the day. So who do I think is going to finish 20th? Kick this off and it's going to be Hull City. And the reason for that, they've lost Steve Bruce. They haven't really strengthened enough. And when you come up from the championship, that is one of the main things you should be doing. That's why Bruce left, apparently. Disagreements over transfers, which isn't great. They've also got a very threadbare squad. And I think at the time of recording this, they've only got one fit centre-back at the minute. So, yeah, I just think they're going to go down. 19th, I've got Burnley for very similar reasons to Hull City. I just don't think they've strengthened enough. They haven't left, uh, lost their manager, however, which is why I've got them 19th instead of 20th. But I think they've got very similar problems. And unless they uh, strengthen very quickly, I think they're going to go down. 18th, I've got Swansea. So this completes the three relegated teams that I think. And the reason for that, they've lost Andre Ayew. They've lost Ashley Williams, who were very, very important to them last season. Yes, they've sent Baston. I think it's from Atletico Madrid. I don't know too much about him. He's their record buy though for 16 million. So perhaps he could he could you know grab the league by the scruff of the neck and manage to keep them up. But we'll see. You've got to have three teams going down, and that's my opinions for it. 17th, just avoiding the drop in my prediction is West Brom. Now Tony Pulis is a master at relegation battles. He never seems to go down, and I think that will happen this season again. He will be in a relegation scrap, but he'll just about miss out from it. I think Rondon's going to be very detrimental to any, well, to them staying up. Uh, there's also the lingering question, as there has been for years, is Berahino going to go? Is he going to stay? We'll have to wait and see for that. But I think they've got a decent squad and it will just be enough to keep up. Well, to stay up in the Premier League. Stay up? Yeah, to stay up in the Premier League. Anyway, 16th, we've got Bournemouth. They have lost one of their best players, if not their best player, in uh, Matt Ritchie to Newcastle, of course. Um, that is going to hurt them a little bit, but I think they've got enough quality to stay in the Premier League. Eddie Howe, I really rate him as a manager. I think he's done a terrific job with them, and I think that's going to continue. I do think they'll be in a relegation scrap, but I think they'll stay up and finish 16th. Crystal Palace is who I've got 15th. They've lost Balassi. They've signed Townsend though, so they've got a direct replacement for him. So I don't think that's going to hurt them too much. They're trying to sign a lot of players. They're trying to put a lot of bids in. Obviously, Ben Teke, if they get him, that's going to really, really help them. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if that one comes up. But I think they will be in a scrap come the end of it. But they'll be relatively safe. It'll just be one of those seasons which is average, really. 15th, I've got them. Next, we've got Sunderland, 14th. A lot of people do have these down for relegation and you, you can understand why but I generally think Moyes, their new manager of course, suits a team like Sunderland and I think he's going to get them some degree of success in the future like you know what he did for Everton. I generally think it'll be similar to that. They have lost, um, well they haven't yet but it looks as though they might lose Kone. They're trying to offer him a new contract but there's rumours of Everton, there's rumours of Chelsea. We'll see what happens but he was really really important to them staying up last season as well as Yanga and Viva. Now I thought this was a buy but it was a loan and as of yet I don't think they've extended that but they have managed to get Yanazai from us on loan and uh, I think he could do a good job for Sunderland if they play wingers. They've got Kazri on one side, Yanazai if he can perform. He did well under Moyes so you know I think they're going to do relatively well and I think 14th they'll just miss out on a relegation scrap come the end of the season and it'll be a building block season for them. Next we've got another Northeast club and that is Middlesbrough, the third promoted team and the only one I've got 
that won't go down in my predictions. And that is generally 13th, by the way, if you're not keeping up. But I think that'll be on the screen anyway, so that was a bit pointless saying that. But anyhow, they've signed a lot of quality. They've signed Victor Valdez. They've signed Negredo. They've signed a hell of a lot of quality to the squad they've already got, such as, I think, the centre-backs Ayala, the Spanish one that did very well in the championship last season. So, you know, they've got a strong team, and I don't think they're going to have any trouble in staying in this league. I think it's going to be, be, uh, be a bit like Bournemouth last season when they came up. A few people thought they might go down, but they, they just were, were terrific, to be fair, for a newly promoted team that's never been in the Premier League before. Of course, Middlesbrough have, I think, eight, nine years ago, but I think they'll stay up, and I think 13th is where they're going to finish. Now, next, I've got Watford, and this this is a, the reason I've got them to finish 12th is probably not what a lot of people would say, but generally, they're managing to reject big money offers for Igalo and Troy Deeney, and then those players signing new deals really sets a statement for the club. It means that they're, they're willing to fight for you, which is a very understated uh, quality, especially when you're, you're a team in the bottom half and you, you want to obviously escape relegation that's the main thing or you want to get mid table and i generally think that's a very under uh, underestimated value so for them to keep those two i know igalo tailored off towards the end of last season but i think he's still got the quality and for watford those two signing new deals is terrific and i think they're gonna have no trouble staying in this division 12th is where i've got them 11th i've got stoke they brought in joe allen who of course the welsh shabby the banter goes on with this guy but in all fairness, for a team like Stoke, I think he will play a very vital part. They've also got him Bula uh, from Porto last season. They got him in January, I think. And they've got a very good squad, Shakiri, Anatovic. You know, a very solid team. And they could easily get top 10. It's very hard ordering this, as you would imagine, as I'm sure you know, because you'll have done your predictions as well. So I've got them 11th, but, you know, they, they could finish a lot higher. Of course they could, but... I've just got them there because I think the 10 teams above them, uh, surprise, surprise, will do a bit better in my predictions. 10th, I've got the Premier League champions, and that is Leicester. Now, they are the hardest team to place in this. They really are. They've lost Kante. How important was he last season? Well, of course, he was very, very important, but how important? I, I hope you know what I'm trying to say. Like, generally, it was he... The the I don't even know how to word this. I'm I'm trying to say how important was Kante to their team. They've still got Mares, they've still got Vardy, but losing Kante, especially the way course he was, he allowed players like Mares and Vardy to get forward to create chances and losing him, will Mendy be able to fill in the void? We'll have to wait and see. But I generally think because of the team strengthening him around them. Even with Morris and Vardy, I think they're going to... Well, it'll still be a good season. Finishing mid-table for a team that, prior to winning the league, was almost relegated is still amazing. So 10th is still really good, but they're an extremely hard team to predict because of the Kante problem. Like, generally, how important was he? And I, I guess we'll see this season. So I've got them 10th. 9th, I've got West Ham. They've signed Andre Ayew. They've managed to keep players like Paye and... Uh, Players like Pai, I've, I've named one player, but <laughs> Antonio, you know, they, they have got a very good squad. Pai was obviously the main talking point, which is why I named him. And I think they're going to have no trouble getting in the top half. They've got a new stadium as well. Bilic is a fantastic manager as well. So I think ninth is a fair prediction. If they'd have signed a couple more players, then, you know, if they've tried to get uh, strikers like Lacazette, like Baka, but they failed to get them. If they do get one of those, though, they could easily push for European places. But for now, I've got them ninth. Eighth, I've got Southampton. Now, this may surprise a lot of people because they've lost Coleman, they've lost Mane, but they have kept most of their players. They've kept the, the core of their team. Players like Fonte, they have lost Pelé as well, actually. That's something that I, I haven't actually said. But I, I just think... Every time you think Southampton are going to you know, fail, they're going to go back down into the bottom half, they seem to somehow get an unknown talent. And I think this season it's going to be Hodgeberg. 
Uh, the signing they got from Bayern Munich, I think he's going to be a really, really good player for them. Uh, they've also signed Nathan Redmond. And I just think they're, they're the kind of team that surprise everyone. They lose so many players over the course of the last few years. Schneidlin, Shaw, Marnie, Lovren, you know, all these players. And they've still managed to maintain. And I think that's what they're going to do this season. I've got them down in eighth. And um, we'll have to wait and see. Now, seventh, I've got the team where their manager has went to. And that is Ronald Koeman. They've managed, as of now, to keep Lukaku, Barkley. They've obviously sold stones. But... If they get Kone like they are rumoured to get from Sunderland, they've already signed Ashley Williams. So losing Stones and getting Ashley Williams and Kone is such a good piece of business. I'm not saying Stones is bad by any stretch of the imagination, but for Everton, I don't think he fits uh, their team, really. I think Williams and Kone would be a fantastic partnership and then have Jagielka as a backup. They're rumoured to get Balassi as well, uh, keeping Lukaku, Barkley. They've still got a really, really strong team. So I've got them 7th and um, that might surprise a few people but uh, let me know your thoughts on that because that is quite high of course. Next I've got the direct rivals and that is Liverpool. Now without European football they could of course break into the top 4. A lot of people are predicting them to get in the top 4. The top 6, well to be honest the entire fucking league this year is extremely hard to predict. But I've got Liverpool 6th, they've got Klopp, they've signed players like Carrias. Uh, Mane, Matip, Clavin. I think all of those players will improve the squad that they've got. But I just think the five teams ahead of them are stronger, even without European commitments. I think Liverpool are trying to build for the future. You know, they believe in Klopp, they believe in his ability to make world class players. They can't attract world class players. That isn't me being, you know, biased as a Manchester United fan, but they, they can't at the minute. So they're, they're making them. And that's what Klopp prides himself on. They've got Mane, I think he's going to be terrific for them, no doubt. Karias, uh, I think he's going to be a lot better than Mignolet. So I've got them down in sixth, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But <sighs> this league is so difficult to predict. Fifth, here's the biggest, but well, one of the biggest uh, talking points in my video. I've got Arsenal. Now, if they sign the centre-back, Mustafi, like they're reported to, then they're going to get in the top four. But as of now, they have not signed Mustafi. And there's reports that the uh, the agent that they were talking to for Mustafi isn't even his agent, which ugh, just baffles belief. But they've signed Xhaka, yes, a very good midfielder, which they needed. They needed a more defensive. They've got Coquelin, but they, they needed someone else. But they need a star striker. They need a world-class striker. They need a centre-back because Gabriel, Mertesacker are injured. And they haven't got them as of yet, so that is why I've got them fifth. I think they're going to fail in the Champions League for the first time ever. This will be the first time that they haven't got top four, if this prediction is correct. But it's generally what I think. If they get a centre-back, if they get a striker, then they'll get inside the top four. But for now, I've got them fifth. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a major talking point, I can already tell. Now, fourth is a team that I think can finish a lot higher if they sign a centre-back. It's a bit like Arsenal, but it's Chelsea. I think Kante, Batshuayi, fantastic buys, particularly Kante. Batshuayi, though, gives them a little bit more option up front, a little bit more firepower. But you look at their defence, Terry, Cahill, because Zuma's out for a few weeks. You know, it, it, it's getting a bit stale. They need, they definitely need that player. And they're after Koulibaly, Kone, if that fails, apparently. But they really need that. And if they do get it with Kante, Batshuayi, the players they've got, like Hazard, without European commitments again... That's another key reason why I think they'll get back inside the top four. But Hazard, I think, will have a stunning season under Conte. So I generally think they could finish higher if they get a centre-back. But as of now, I'm going to leave them as fourth. Third, I've got Manchester City. Now, that, that again, the top five is going to cause so much debate. And uh, I'm going to be called deluded, biased and everything under the sun. But... Pep Guardiola has made seven signings and the only one that's available for their very first game is John Stones. They've signed a lot of youngsters. I think, actually no, two, sorry, Nelito uh, is also available for selection. I forgot about him. So I think he's made eight signings actually because of Rudy. But anyway, only two of them are available and uh, a lot of them are young, born Nelito. So he's building for the future, of course. And I just think, I, I just think they... they they are going to be a lot better in a couple of years. But for this year, I just I think that they will compete. But just 
be a little bit off it and the top two that I've got <laughs> will be a bit better. It's, it's hard to explain but I just generally think because the players are young and a couple of them are injury prone like Gundo, uh, Gundogan who's a quality player but it's whether he can get the fitness up. Sane isn't even fit apparently according to um, Pep Guardiola. I think he'll be terrific for them but yeah, I just think it's going to take time for Pep Guardiola. That's what I'm trying to say. Time. And uh, yeah, I've got them down in third. Second, probably even more of a talking point to uh, the Arsenal one. I've got Spurs. And uh, I know I said they'd win the league last season, but they bottled that in sp spectacular fashion, losing 5-1 to uh, Newcastle of all teams. But I generally think they have done very well this transfer window. They've got a solid first team. And the things they didn't have last season was depth. This season, however, they've managed to sign that. They've got players like Janssen, they've got Wanyama. I'm pretty sure they signed a centre-back as well. Off the top of my head, I can't remember, but they've got that depth that they lacked last season. They've got quality players like Kane, Ali, Alderweireld, Loris, Walker. You know, they've got brilliant, they've got a really, really strong team. And a lot of people are overlooking them. And generally, I think that's a mistake. They've got a fantastic manager as well in Pochettino. So, yeah, I've got them second, which I'm pretty sure no one I know has. And uh, whether that's a mistake, we'll have to wait and see. But number one, I've got Manchester United, which is no surprise to anyone whatsoever. But for the last three years, I haven't predicted them to finish first. Never. I think last season I predicted second, we finished fifth. But I generally thought we'd improve under Louis van Gaal. But this season, we've got Mourinho in, who's a winner. We've signed the four targets we wanted. We've got Pogba, Ibrahimovic, Bay, Mkhitaryan, all without Champions League. And they've left Champions League clubs to play for us. We have the problem of Europa League, of course. But I think we've got enough depth in our squad. We've got enough quality. And I really believe in Mourinho. That's something I haven't done in the last three years. Although I've had hopes, I just generally haven't truly believed that we can actually win the league. And now I generally do. We've got that striker we needed to um, you know, give Rashford a little bit more experience. I mean, one of the best in the world still, even though he's 34. We've signed Paul Pogba. That is such a statement. To, to beat Real Madrid and Barca to his signing, to, for him to leave Juventus, no matter what money's offered, no matter the world record transfer fee, to, for him to leave, leave Juventus, who generally have a chance of winning the Champions League, to go for a club that isn't even in that, is fantastic. Henrik Mkhitaryan, who I think will be our player of the year. Um, he's such an underrated, well, he's not underrated, but in terms of Pogba and Ibra, everyone seems to be, you know, forgetting about Mkhitaryan, but I think he, he's exactly what we've lacked. A creative winger who can also play number 10. He can play anywhere front, uh, you know, from the attacking mid spot, left, right, you know, he, he's just terrific. He's the assister we've missed, the midfielder who can score goals, We've signed two of those in Mkhitaryan and uh, Pogba. I've been very impressed with Bailly in pre-season. There's rumours if we sell someone else that we'll get another centre-back in uh, if we manage to sell Rojo or Jones. But for now, even without that centre-back, I generally think we can win the league. And that is something I haven't said since Fergie left. I I've said we can, but I've never predicted us to actually go and do it. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think of my predictions. Am I being biased? I'm sure most people will think I am. Am I absolutely crazy for seeing Spurs will finish second and Arsenal will finish fifth? Let me know. I mean, I'm ready for all this because a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, but that's that's the beauty of a prediction video. Whoever predicted Leicester to win the league last season is going to be laughing now. So if by the end of this I've got most of my predictions right, I'm going to be delighted. If not, then I'm a deluded fool. But uh, we'll see what happens at the end of the season. I can't wait for the Premier League. The most excited I've been in absolute ages years and years i haven't been this excited for ages for the premier league so uh yeah let me know your predictions let me know your thoughts on mine hopefully you have enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already like the video and yeah peace